Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker here, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about an announcement that Blue Origins made this week. Specifically, they announced their Blue Moon Lander. Now, the Blue Moon Lander is a answer to how to get payloads onto the moon. It's been talked about for a little while that NASA wants to use commercial spacecraft to land payloads on the surface of the moon, and Blue Moon is one means by doing that. The Blue Moon Lander will fit inside of a New Glenn rocket, which is the rocket that Blue Origins has been working on for some time, and it will be able to take a payload of two and a half metric tons to the surface of the moon. You can do an awful lot with this amount of weight, and it should be a pretty good gauge to start things going along. And a later extended version, which we don't really know how they're planning on launching, could land enough payload to include an ascent lander so that you could lift something back off. The Blue Moon lander looks a lot like the Apollo program in many respects. It uh, has some big tanks that weren't so obvious, but it's kind of the same general shape and even roughly the same size. But there are some big differences. The single biggest difference is this uses hydrolox, hydrogen and oxygen to power it as compared to the Apollo program that used a hypergolic propellant that was much less efficient. And by using the more efficient hydrogen and oxygen, they're able to take a larger payload there than you would be otherwise, or more specifically, they're able to use New Glenn, which is not able to carry as much payload into orbit to carry the spacecraft there. Now, New Glenn is roughly the same size as the Saturn V rocket. The main reason why it can't take as much payload is because it is largely reusable. Following in the same trend that SpaceX is, they want to reduce the cost to access space. Overall, this seems like a pretty neat little project, and hopefully they'll be able to make something out of it. And this is really kind of the first real public look that Jeff Bezos has given on his vision for exploring space and really moving into space. We've heard bits and pieces before, but this is one nice unified vision given in about 45 minutes. There are a couple of questions, though, that have come up, and I wanted to answer some of them. First one is, is how will this actually be launched? Well, New Glenn is able to take 13 metric tons into a geosynchronous transfer orbit, GTO, and that's a decent amount, but GTO isn't quite the same as sending something to the moon, so it has a very efficient upper stage and most likely will be able to make full use out of that. It also uses a hydrolock system. So given all of this, it will probably be able to take about 10 metric tons roughly to translunar orbit. Now, is this enough? Well, probably. The lower section of the Apollo lander Dry mass was about 2 metric tons, roughly speaking. We know that the fuel that was in there was about 8 metric tons, but this had a much, much less efficient fuel. With Hydrolox, you can use a significant amount less fuel. The payload they're talking is 3.5 metric tons, so that leaves a total of about 4.5 tons of fuel. Now, this four and a half tons of fuel, is that enough to land on the moon? Well, they have to be able to orbit the moon first, which the lunar lander didn't, and then land on the moon. But it seems at least plausible that about half of the spacecraft mass would be devoted. Quite frankly, it seems, I have to crunch the numbers a little bit more detail, but it seems to me like they're probably missing a little something here. And maybe New Glenn will actually be able to take a higher payload mass, but It'd be really neat to do this if they can actually pull it off. Now, this does beg a question though, why did they use Hydrolox? Hydrogen has been a very, very difficult thing to use as fuel. Really, only the United States really uses it as fuel. It used it for the space shuttle, and a number of other things, but it has some pretty serious drawbacks. The thrust that you get from a hydrogen engine is not as much. And that's why they had to use the solid boosters to 
help kickstart the space shuttle into getting into low Earth orbit. But it does have a couple of advantages. One, it's a very, very highly efficient fuel. It is the most efficient rocket fuel that's not toxic that we can easily use. So in that sense, it's a great rocket fuel. But I don't think this is all that he had in mind by choosing to use hydrogen and oxygen. One of the neat things with the spacecraft is it will be able to be on the moon. Now, the moon environment is somewhat different. We're kind of used to thinking of in-situ resource utilization for Mars because that's been talked about by Robert Zubrin and many, many people since him largely following in his footsteps, including SpaceX. But with the carbon dioxide that you have on the surface of Mars, you're able to use that to create methane and oxygen, which is a really, really neat rocket fuel. It has a relatively high thrust and relatively high efficiency, making it perhaps the best of all worlds. But when you start to look at the moon, the moon doesn't have a great source of carbon. In fact, the most common element inside of the soil, the regolith of the moon, is actually oxygen. So if you bring an excess of oxygen, you could just take and heat the soil up and you'll actually release oxygen that's going to be used to breathe, no doubt. We know that Andy Weir talked about this in his book, Artemis, but there is an awful lot of oxygen available on the surface of the moon. So that's phase one. Phase two, you can actually get from the surface of the moon water in the form of ice. Specifically at the South Pole, the Shackleton Crater, there is well known to be some amount of ice that's hiding down there. So if you melt this ice and you use electrolysis to convert it to oxygen and hydrogen, bam, you have your rocket fuel at home. There are some other things. Quite frankly, in my mind, this was largely a political play. Jeff Bezos gave this discussion two miles away from the Capitol building and probably invited a number of Congress people. This was a plan to get Congress's attention. Why would he want to do that? Well, Blue Origin wants to be a part of NASA's return to the moon. Why does hydrogen factor into this? Well, that is the fuel that they are saying will be available on the, the LOPG, the Lunar Orbiting Gateway platform, that NASA is planning on sending into a orbit around one of the Lagrange points of the moon that will be a part of their mission to get back to the moon and to stay there and to do a better exploration of it. How will all of this work out? Well, it's hard to say. I think that the hydrogen and oxygen, while it seems a little bit strange, will actually work fairly well for the moon. The thrust isn't as important on the moon because you have a lower gravity and the hydrogen and oxygen's thrusting ability only really takes away if you have a higher gravity like you do on Earth. So I think it will probably work. It's going to be really, really interesting to figure out what happens though because you have a number of different plans that are competing here. Now no doubt Blue Origin is going to pitch this as a part of the plan that NASA will have to send humans to the moon. It really seems like it's made specifically for that purpose in mind, but maybe they've got something else up their sleeves. I don't really know. It will be interesting to see how this competes. You really have kind of this battle of the billionaires of Elon Musk versus Jeff Bezos. They're both trying to make humans an interplanetary species, and they both have slightly different visions, but a lot of the elements are the same, specifically the reducing the cost to get into space. And it's a really exciting time to be there. I look forward to hearing more about Blue Origin. They're a really neat company that we don't know as much about as I would like. And hopefully someday we'll hear more. Thank you for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care. So that leaves a total of about...
So that leaves a total of the blue loon. Now the blue loon man, or the blue moon. Now the blue loon man. 